Yo, what's up? Uh, I hope you enjoyed my stroke effect part one, so now let's go ahead and check out part two, what I have, now dealing with text. First, I'm going to show you a couple things that we're going to emulate here. Uh, here is writing my name on with the write-on tool. Uh, that's it with regular, basic uh, font. If we want to try something a little more cursive, a little more flashy, we have this one right here. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, not bad. Could use a little fine-tuning, but not bad. All right, and last but not least, the main one that I wanted to show you was this last one, which you might notice is very similar to all of them, but this one just has a little bit of a different tweak on it. Let's take a look. Okay, so this one writes all on at the same exact time, which is a neat little feature that I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So let's jump into it. All right, so this is going to be part two of the write-on effect using the uh, pen tool, and this time, like I said, with text. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my uh, type tool, and I'm going to type in, let's just go, my name, Curtis. Okay? Uh, obviously that's a little too small for me, so I'm going to increase it a little bit. Usually what I do is I go right back over to the arrow tool, and then I can increase the font and everything without highlighting it. I usually hate highlighting stuff, but that's just me. I might even increase the, uh, the space between my letters a little bit, and I'll show you guys why in a moment. So let's just increase that to about 51. That should be good. So there's my name, Curtis. Boo bam. Now, just like before, what we did is I'm going to go to my pen tool, and I'm just going to simply go about my characters. So I'm going to go around my C, okay, and what I'm going to do that I did not do last time, let me increase one down here, uh, what I'm going to do that I did not do last time is I'm actually going to make a separate pen mask for each letter. And I'll show you why, because it's a neat little trick that I'm going to show you. So that's mine for the C. I'll then now go on to the U. So I'm going to start, whoops, didn't want, it, didn't want it to continue. So I'm going to click down here. If I want to be sure it's disjointed, I can click down here and click right back up here. And it'll start a whole new pen path, which is exactly what I want. Okay, and there's my U. And uh, let's see here. I'll even start a new point for this U. So I'll have it start kind of at the same time. There we go. Click down here again, same thing for the R. Start right there, so I get the curvature of the R a little bit. This is one thing that's kind of annoying, it's kind of a bigger R. I'm even going to do a separate section for this little uh, little drop here. Boop, boop. Alrighty. Same thing for the T. Start up meow, go down here. Bop, bop, bop. Undercutter's Pizza. Okay. Click down here again. I'm going to do a separate section for the crossbar of the T. There we go. Click down here again. Do the same thing for the I. I'll start at the bottom of the I this time and bring it on up. Okay. And then I'll even do a little separate one for the... Actually, I won't do a separate one for the dot. And if you ever want to reconnect from a uh, old mass point to, a, to uh, bring it into a new one, what I usually do is I'll click off of it. Okay, be sure it's unhighlighted. Be sure all those points are unhighlighted. See, like that one is. And then I can simply go back to my pen tool again and click on up there, and then it'll be connected. Alrighty. So let me see here. And then I want a separate one for the S also. Whoops, just like I said before, I'm going to click on down here and then do one for the S also. Okay. Alrighty. So now, just like before, what you might notice is if I click on my name and I hit M, that I have multiple masks, whereas in the last tutorial, we only had one mask because that's all I did was at one time. So I actually have a different mask for each one that I did for each letter. Alrighty. <clears throat> so now that I got all the masks all done, now I'm going to go up to my effect and do the same exact thing I did before. I'm going to go up to effect, generate, and all the way down to stroke. All right. Uh, again, I'm going to increase my brush size until it makes my letters go away. Now, one cool thing about all these masks is you might notice under Mask 1, I'm going to check all masks. And now it should fill up all my masks, okay? I might even have to fine-tune my S a little bit here, okay? And maybe even, what is this, my I, my T? I'm not really sure, but let's try to find it somewhere in between, okay? That should be good enough. Um, 
There we go. And now I increase it a little bit. Let's not forget to change it to reveal original image. Okay, bam, there it is. And now I can play around with my start and my end point. I don't want to play with the start point this time. It looks like I want to play with my end point because I want it to go from that side down as it paints on my letters. So again, it was a reveal original image. All right. So now I can hit my end point there, hit my stopwatch, be sure I'm at the beginning. And then I'm going to increase my time to about two seconds, and then I'll uh, increase my endpoint to 100%. So let's take a quick RAM preview of this. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okay, so it did a pretty cool job, huh? Now, the main reason why I wanted to show you guys this is I'm going to show you another effect, which is why we did each mask separately. Okay, I did each mask separately because you might notice here it says stroke sequentially, which in my mask order, it's making it stroke one mask at a time, which is kind of cool. But what happens if I uncheck that? Let's check this out. You will notice now that it's actually stroking them all on at the same exact time. So it kind of gives you a cool effect if you want to be able to write it on faster. That's one way you can do it. I think it's kind of neat. Eh, it's okay. Depending on how you want to use it, I always say make it your own and make it look good. Uh, another thing that I might add, the reason why I put spacing between the letter is that sometimes you might notice that you will have certain things that will bleed on to other letters, uh, which can be really annoying, which is sometimes why I space them out. A lot of times this is more commonly used for cursive lettering, so I even made my name here real fast so you guys can check out what a cursive style might look like. There it is, Curtis and Cursive. I obviously did this one also really fast, so it gives you an idea of what's happening here. But anyways, thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you learned something, and I hope you use this effect, and I hope you use it in an awesome way that will wow the pants even off of me. Uh, have a good one, and have a great day.